Hello and welcome to Pokey Dippies. I am your host, Joe Zamora here, and with me I have Jesse Dudek. Yes, so we're going to be doing something a little bit different this time. Tell them what we're doing, Joe. Definitely, we're doing something a little bit different here. This is kind of a midweek episode that we will start releasing pretty soon. Not a set date, but basically what we're calling this is... Canto Files Gym Leaders Edition. And of course, there is no other person as a gym leader that you can start off with than Brock. Uh, yes, Brock is probably one of the most well-known gym leaders because not also was he in quite a few games, he's also well-known in the anime. So not also are we doing the first gym leader in Kanto, we're also doing arguably one of the most well-known ones. Oh yeah, certainly. Other than Misty, he's been in multiple seasons, multiple games, uh, caught in very many Pokemon, some outside of his specialty, some in, but being a Pokemon breeder that he is, of course, he wasn't going to just stick with the rock type. So, Jesse is going to go ahead and uh, give y'all some backstory on Brock, and then we will delve deeper into his history. All right, so there's two different sides of Brock. You've got the anime, and then you also got the Brock from in-game. Brock's been in a ton of games. He was in the original Red, Blue, and Yellow. He was also in Fire Green and Fire Red and Leaf Green. He was in Gold and Silver. He was in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, and he was also in the Let's Go game. So right there, he's a gym leader in four different games. Two of them remakes, two of them originals. And then also, he was a part of the... Uh, the uh what was it they called in black and white the uh the black and white two the oh. pokemon world tournament there you go so he got kind of an update in that one too so he hasn't been in anything really else since then but i wouldn't be surprised if who knows what we'll see in the next gen but um he has a, a plethora of pokemon in the original games uh in red uh green and blue and yellow He's got his Geodude and Onyx, which, especially when you started in yellow, that could be a challenge if you didn't figure out what to do. Uh, and Gold, Silver, and Crystal, he had a little bit of a different. He he had a Graveler, Rhyhorn, Omastar, Kabutops, and Onyx. So you know, he added a little bit, you know, added diversified. Some, added some flair or flavor, if you will, since he was a top chef in the Pokemon anime. Right. Uh, then in uh, Fire, Red and Leaf, Fire Red and Leaf Green, he had the same Pokemon uh, for the first gym leader, Geodude or Onyx. Uh, the difference is in the red and blue, he his TM was Bide. And uh, Fire Red and Leaf Green, that became Rock Tomb, which actually helped a lot because he was a rock gym leader. It would be nice if he gave you a TM for a rock move. Definitely. I do remember then, in uh, red and blue, he did his onyx did know rock throw, so he did know a rock move, but not one that was TM learned for you. Actually, he did not have a rock move. Really? So that must have been in yellow when they updated that. Well, so I'm looking at his moves. He had a Geo dude that just knew tackle, and then his onyx knew tackle, screech, bide, and bind, which. Oh. Bind was arguably a, one of the more broken moves in, uh, in the Gen 1 saga just because it was basically a wrap, which in that gen, you couldn't move. So it was just basically attacking you the whole time and you could do nothing. Yeah, Brock oh, was, was a cock nice. in Gen 1. Uh, definitely more serious in-game than he was in the anime. Well, actually... Yes. No, actually, in the anime, he was pretty serious in that first episode. So I take that back. <laughs> yeah, and then that, that's as high as it got. Um, so in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, that's when he really started to bust it out. Uh, Heart Gold and Soul Silver, when you face him the first time, he had the same Pokemon as he did in Gold and Silver Crystal, which was the Graveler, Rhyhorn, Omastar, Kabutops, and Onyx. Had more different moves just because there was more of a move set compared to Gen 1. 
Uh, then there was also uh, the rematches that you could do, which was a fun little add-in. Um, and that one, he switched it up a little bit. He had a Gold Umbrella Camp, Omastar, Kabutops, Onyx, and a Rampardos. So a little bit trickier on that one. Yeah, he had um, the only... Gen 4 mod. <laughs> right? Um, it was pretty much the same. Uh, he was in the, the Pokemon World Tournament. Uh, the only thing he really added in that one that uh, he didn't have in the other games, he had an Aerodactyl on one team in the Kanto League Tournament. Uh, Kanto Leaders, I'm sorry. And then there was a World Leaders Tournament that if you faced him, he had an Onyx, Golem, Kabutops, Tyranitar... Aerodactyl or Rhyperior. So he that, that that's a pretty good combination of rock mods. That's a hefty boost in what the hell he had before. Now um uh now let's go uh he actually did have Rock Throw and Onyx, so maybe that was it. Maybe. I could have sworn it was in the older games, but maybe I'm thinking of uh Fire Red Leaf Green. Possibly, but no, but, but yeah. then they had the rock team then. So I don't know what the hell I'm thinking. Yeah. Well, and yeah, in the fire red and leaf green, they had that rock tomb. So, but he was your first gym leader. He wasn't too hard because two of the three starters you picked, they knew moves that could easily take them out because both Geodude and Onyx are rock and ground. So they were pretty easy with a grass or a water move. And then even in the later games with a little bit more diversity, like you had the Nidoran male that had double kick, man key could learn a fighting move. He wasn't unstoppable, but he did give you a good challenge, especially if you pick Charmander and you're like, Hey, I'm just going to train this. So that was mainly what all of his, uh, the game. And like I said, he was in quite a few. The last one was gen five. So it's been a while. Yeah. Uh, then there's the anime, which, oh man, that was something else. But um, real quick, uh, going back to the games, um, obviously Rock was a pretty good staple as the first gym leader because mm-hmm. all the way up until Gen Five, they had the first gym be Rock Gym. Huh. So that that's that's. That's how you know um, the game developers were like, all right, rock type is actually a really good type, and we should stick yeah. with this for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true, because, I mean, Gen 2 might be the exception. They started off with flying, but, oh, yeah, Gen right. 3 was Roxanne, and Gen 4 was uh, Roark. I think that was Roark, right? Mm-hmm. But he had his fossils, which uh, his craniodose, which was rock. So, yeah. Rock was one of those just starting ones that was a little bit of a challenge, but not overwhelming. Like, there could have been worse ones, I think, but... Definitely. I think, um, you know, Gen 2 actually didn't have a Rock Gym Leader after all, and due to the addition of Tyranitar, you thought they would have done something with that? But I guess since they gave it to Brock, they didn't have to really worry about it. Gen 2 was weird because, uh... The level you had some like some of the better Pokemon in Gen 2, you couldn't get until you got until the second half of the game, which kind of stinks because like you couldn't get a Slugmore or a Hounder until you got to Kanto, and you couldn't get a Tyranitar until you went to Mount Silver, and which, got a, which was know. really weird too. Because you would think, like, you know, Hounder, uh, Murkrow, Slugma, Gen 2 Pokemon, you think they'd be in the Johto region, and they weren't, they were actually in the Kanto region. Yeah, it was kind of, kind of a disappointment, but yeah, I mean, Brock had a, a good selection of rock types, and there's probably some other ones that could be added here that I'm missing. Like, actually, of all the Pokemon you face, Steelix is actually not on the list of one of them, mainly because it's not a rock type, but you would have figured maybe they would have made the exception, because if you look at Pearl and uh, Diamond... The uh, electric gym leader had a several mods that weren't electric in his, so. Mm-hmm. So it, it was just one of those things. Like, you know, Pokemon pick and chooses, like, you know, even all the way to the Elite Four with, um, what's his name, Flynn? He didn't even have all fire types. He had, like, no. a ghost type and something else. 
but you know. Yeah, that's that's where plan we got it right, but uh, uh, yeah, he has a plethora of different Pokemon, and especially in the anime, that's where he really diversifies because he doesn't he doesn't become like Misty, who's like, oh, I catch just water types. He actually diversifies quite a bit. Yeah, um, if I could, I'm gonna go ahead and list off, you know, the Pokemon he kind of had throughout the regions. Uh, yeah. In game and anime included. Um, we didn't include all of them in uh, our team prep. Uh, that's what we'll be talking about a little bit later. But um, this is basically all the Pokemon he's had in game or on the anime. So he has Golem, of course, Omastar, Steelix, which is also a Mega Steelix. If you've watched the Alolan series, uh, Kabutops in game, Rhydon in game, Rampardos, uh, oh, Gen 2 that we just covered. Um, he also has Relicanth, Aerodactyl, Ludicolo, Anime, Tyranitar, Rhyperior, Sudabudo, which is anime but still fits the rock type criteria. Um, of course, he caught the Zubat in Gen 1. Uh, I think like the the third episode of of uh, the Kanto Indigo League, and eventually that of course evolved into a Crobat. Gen two, he caught the Pineco that evolved into Fortress. Then he had a Marsh Tomp in Gen three. Didn't fully evolve into Swampert, but we considered it as a fair play Pokemon. Um, Comfey that was given to him in Gen seven by a uh, Nurse Joy. Uh, he did catch a Chansey, uh, the Hapini that he evolved into a Chansey. Then he had a, a Ninetale, uh, no, sorry, he had the uh, Vulpix, which we considered could evolve into Ninetale's Cantonian. And he also had the Crow Gunk, which we considered could evolve into Toxic Croak, given how much time he's had since then that he's had those Pokemon. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he definitely has a little bit more uh, diversity uh, when it comes to the anime, uh, which was kind of, you know, I was okay with that because it gave him a little bit more of a character development to his points. Yeah, it 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 um it it really broad spected the fact that he really wanted to be a true Pokemon breeder by giving him all those extra typings. Because uh, he, he kind of evolved from his gym leader status to a breeder status. Yeah, and uh, like I said earlier, he he's probably, I would say, been in the most episodes other than Ash and Pikachu uh, of all characters. Because he literally was there f for Gen 1, and then he was gone for a little bit for the Orange Islands. Uh, all for Gen 2, all for Gen 3, and all for Gen 4. And he's made spot appearances throughout the... Like, he was there for Gen 5, he was there for Gen 7, and uh, I know there's some... I'm pretty sure there's some episodes with him in Gen 8 with the Pokemon journey. So, he's just... Like, he's a solid character. He has his quirks. Uh, but he definitely develops from just a gym leader to, you know, a breeder to an actual doctor. Which is kind of cool. Yeah, and um, a, l a little bit extra on the reasoning why he wasn't in the Orange Islands. Um, the Pokemon creators actually came out and said uh, they didn't want to have Brock in that season. That's why they replaced him with Tracy. Because um, of racial issues. They thought, you know, having a, having a character like Brock with, you know, closed eyes being from a Japanese cartoon. Oh shit! They thought that would stir up some controversy, and actually, people were like, "No, you need to bring Brock back," and that's why they eventually brought him back into the fold and uh, put Tracy on the back burner as Pokey, uh, Professor Oak's assistant. Because uh, as much as they thought it would be a controversy, people actually fell in love with the character of Brock. And that's why he was a mainstay in the anime for so long. 
Oh man, I didn't realize that was the reason. Yeah, I I I, uh, I read that I think a few years ago, and there was I remember there was some videos about it. I remember there was an episode where he actually opens his eyes because I think he was trying to make like a Pokemon laugh, <laughs> and he opened his eyes once. That's hilarious. My other favorite thing about him is the uh, the picture where. <laughs> It has a Snorlax using Hyper Beam from its eyes, and it's like, wait, that's where it shoots its Hyper Beam. That must be where Brock does, too. Yeah, that's the. That, there's so many memes about it. And then um, there's actually people who have developed a team with Pokemon who have their eyes closed that would be perfect for Brock. And uh, I think that's the funniest shit ever. So, I mean, uh, uh, Brock was definitely probably a lot different than in the game because in the the game, you know, he acted like a kind of serious, cool, you know, tough guy almost. Mm-hmm. Where in the anime, he... he didn't wear a shirt. Uh, he, <laughs> any... It's weird because he would go for almost any lady, but it would have to be someone older than him. Because mm-hmm. it was someone his age, roughly, maybe even a little bit younger. No. Because it was just weird. Because, you know, hey, if a little girl needed help, you know, he'd be all normal. But if it was someone his age or a little bit older, suddenly, poof. Yeah, I like I like that. Because there was episodes where, like, Missy and Ash would be like, Brock, why aren't you fucking, like, simping over that girl? And he's like, I don't know. There's just something about her. Uh, and it kind of... It just don't feel right. It's kind of sus. <laughs> You're right. And it's just, it, it's kind of weird because almost every girl will kind of send off his radar, but there are certain times where it's just like, nope. And it's kind of funny to see that. And it's funny because I feel like nowadays, if that was a part of a regular thing, he he would, uh, oh, Brock I don't think canceled. he could be in a show. <laughs> because Brock too many people would be like, oh, he, oh, he's a womanizer. I don't want that. And it's, you know, it's a TV show. I mean, you don't want to say, oh, yeah, just go for it. But, you know, I could see why it could be considered partly controversial, but I don't think it's so bad that it's like, oh, we need to get him out. So. But he he definitely, during the anime, he was one of my favorite characters. And to be honest, when he left after uh, the uh, Gen 4 episodes, I kind of just stopped watching because... You know, he was part of the original crew, and then you just basically replaced him, and, yeah, you know, couldn't watch it, you know? It just... Yeah, and that was the crazy part, too, because, I mean, he was such a mainstay, like I said earlier, and, um, God, you gotta love Brock for his infamous pun about the fucking frying pan mm-hmm. is a drying pan now. <laughs> right. <laughs> that just sticks in your head. Like, anyone who is a Brock fan thinks of that quote, I'm sure, at least twice a day. I mean, Brock is infamous. He has a great look, and giving you your first boulder badge is probably one of the most memorable, nostalgic things you can do as a kid growing up in the 90s. Yeah, definitely. So, well, I think we've talked enough about him. Let's try some battles with the team we built. Oh, definitely. We're going to try to put ourselves to the test and see if we can be as good of a rock-type specialist as Brock. So, after this uh, little uh, break here, where you will hear a sponsorship, uh, we will be back and you will be able to watch us do some showdown battle as Brock probably would love us to battle it. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and start off with some battles. I am Pokey Dippy Brock here, uh, fighting Mick White Trash. Nice. Okay, so. He has a. We're doing. Oh, go ahead. I was about to say, uh, we got the timer on, so we got to be a little quicker on this. But we're doing this a little bit differently. Usually we would battle each other. But we're actually battling random people just to see how this time team works. So 
So uh, Lugia versus our Lugia, our Felix Rocky. He's switching to Blissey. Huh. I wonder why. Uh, I, I don't know. Nice McToss. I mean, I mean, we just body press that. <clears throat> Unless, yeah, just that. I, that's weird. Oh no, that red card yeah, burned that us. Yeah, that red card fucked us. Oh man. Okay, so his slow bro comes out, which is his uh, Galarian one. Should I just explosion here? No. I don't know. Let, I don't you know think what? so. Let, let's switch to. Let's let's switch to one. Let's switch to Tyranitar, which is Wannabe Zilla. Wannabe Zilla. <laughs> nice. Good call. Psyshock didn't do anything. That's weird, though, because it wouldn't have done nothing to uh, Felix either. You know what? I think I'm going to pull the trigger here and go Z Power yeah. and Home Claws. Yeah, I was just looking at that and I'm like, mm, his team, we could do good. Oh, man, look at that. <laughs> oh, yeah, broke the multi scale. <laughs> oh, shit. Yay. Look at that. And we're bulky, so we can take a hit. Should I just go Stone Edge or Crunch? Uh, I would stone edge. Oh, oh substitute. And, but we hit it. But we hit it. I think I'm going to go crunch because okay. I don't want to. Yeah, let's it. go with crunch. Oh, okay, we're on the timer fuck now. You, you fucking <laughs> uber bitch. Why are you scared of my wannabe Zilla? Okay, we got Lucario. Um, uh, should I switch? Should I hit? I mean, well, we boosted special. Defense. Yeah, he. But he's gonna hit any kind of fighting attacks. Gonna fuck us up. I mean, I could go to X Wing here if he's gonna go fighting. That's double resisted or quad resisted. But then we burned our Z move for nothing. I mean, we're gonna die anyways. I'm going uh, unless we D Max. I'm going. And I still don't think. Can you go? <laughs> oh, he's oh, gonna go. You okay. Bastard. All right. All right. I'm going to go Rocky here. I don't think he takes us out with a cross chop. Oh, he missed. Oh, he missed. Oh, oh, press. oh shit. So good. Headphone users, beware. <laughs> oh, right. dude. What are you Weaver. doing? I oh, think heavy he, duty boots. Heavy duty boots. He's done. I, there's nothing he can do here. Nope. We're too bulky. We're too bulky. Critical hit. Ah, I don't think it was necessary. Then comes Corviknight. All right. So this one, I'm going to explosion on. Because no, I wouldn't explode. Uh, you think? Because he's just going to bulk up. And nah, I don't want to give him a free bulk nah, up. Keep, I, I want us to keep Rocky until we get rid of Blissey. Oh, fair. Fair. Let's, Let, let's, get, in, uh, let's, go let's get in Crobat. Yeah, because I want to get uh, I want to get Oma Star going. <clears throat> Free bulk up, son of a bitch. All right, let's go ahead. Well, what do we do here? I mean, a defog tell. I would, I would say uh, maybe till when then you turn out. All right, I mean we're giving them too many bulk ups. I feel. Oh shit! An agility. Okay, you turn. We got to get uh, almost star in there. Stat. This man's about it. <laughs> He's got that hidden Corviknight tech. Oh, okay. Okay, perfect. that's fair. All right, he didn't hit us. We're gonna go ahead and go for the shell smash, and then we're gonna Dynamax. Because his oh, special defense ain't boosted. He's a special defensive tank, but he ain't ready for this. Nah, he ain't that bulky in special defense. I'm going Max Geyser. My only worry is he's going to bring in Blessy, but we're going all the way. Woo! Get out of here. Gone, Get out of here. Wow. Blissey, you know, I don't think you take two Max Geysers here. Dude, you didn't oh, take one critical, critical hit. hit. Oh, great outing for our first battle. Oh, my God. Look at this. And then we can go for the max. Oh wait, we don't have max quake. Max geyser is fine. We got rain boost. Yeah, yeah. He's he's poison psychic. So nice. Look at that, dude. Five zero for our first battle. 
All right. There we go. GG to Mick White Trash. <laughs> nice. That was pretty. That was pretty well. That that Corviknight was a little. A little scary it at was, first. It's, it, yeah, but once I noticed he wasn't boosting his special defense, I think we're good to go. All right, now we got Jesse here getting ready to battle X Norlax. Uh, he's going to start with Shuckle, I feel like. All right, so the teams are, you know, me me and Jesse had the same team of Aerodactyl, Crobat, Chansey, Steelix, Omastar, and Tyranitar. X Norlax has Tyranitar, Aegis Slash, Cradilly, Excadrill, Garchomp, and Shuckle. And of course, Shuckle is led versus Jesse here, the I Wish Steelix. What are you wishing for? I wish I had a Steelix. <laughs> so remember, guys, we're putting on our best Brock persona, and we. After my win, let's hope uh, Jesse can get the same win going as both people trade stealth rocks here. Yeah, this is uh, this is gonna be annoying, but he can't toxic me, which is the key thing. And um, yeah, sorry, I had a brain fart. Mm -hmm. Body press goes off into Shuckle. As Sandstorm. Shuckle uses oh. Sandstorm, actually boosting both teams at this point. Oh, I bet you anything he's setting up the sandstorm for Excadrill. Oh, yeah. You might have to go Crobat if he goes Excadrill. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of leaning towards Crobat right now. All right, Mad Bat oh. comes <laughs> in as Shuckle goes Encore. Um, and Mad Bat, uh, I think Toxic would be the play. Well, if he switches to Excadrill, that might not be good. I'm leaning towards either Tailwind or Defog. The Rocks luckily won't hurt me that much because my the Rock based team. Mm -hmm. But it, if he's bringing in Excadrill, then you it know, won't hurt them actually, much either. Um, actually, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna go with Defog because if he brings in Excadrill, then I can bring in Lord Helix. There you go. He's gonna probably Encore again. Oh, Sticky Web. Oh, sticky okay. Web. I guess I'll, another I'll... defog. Waste oh, he's got no attacking there. moves. Okay. Oh, and that's another Pokemon that can't be toxic. Yeah. Well, he doesn't have toxic anyway, so. Well, he might, but you've only had. Okay, you know, know what? I will. I'm just gonna toxic you. <laughs> and at this point, I think you go back to Steelix. Yeah. All right, Tyranitar comes in, gets the Sand Stream off as I Wish comes back in and takes a little bit from Stealth Rocks, not too much. Okay, so uh, he knows I have Body Press. I wonder if he'll bring in Aga Slash. Um, I mean, you go Stealth Rocks, play it safe, or just push Body Press anyway. Maybe he'll get cocky and go for a Dragon Dance. Oh, he got cocky. Oh, he got he cocky. Got wait, wait. How did how did Steelix go in front of a Tyranitar? Dude, ours is like we're men. What? We're negative speed. Yeah. What? That doesn't make Maybe, any sense. I bet you if it, he has to be Iron Ball Tyranitar <laughs> for us to outspeed him, has to be. Dude. Okay, this guy's dumb. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, fair. Body press. You know, red card's actually fucking us over, so we might want to. Yeah, I know, that. right? <laughs> <laughs> we're like, oh, because we're 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 leaning with starting with Steelix first, so. Okay, that oh, didn't do as much as I thought it would. And well, Cray Daily yeah. is pretty slow. Well, Gyro Ball was more of a super effective attack, so. Body press is too. Oh, it is okay. Yeah, duh. <laughs> I had a, I had a brain thought. I thought it was. <laughs> All right. Okay. I think now would be a good time to explosion. I think he'll go sword stance. Oh okay. no! Oh, we're dead either way. All right, man. Bat comes back in with the heavy duty boots. 
We got a. Uh, I'm gonna defog so I can get a clean. Oh, and he switches. Why? Why did he switch out his Mega Garchomp to an know. Aegis Slash versus a Man Bat? Maybe he was predicting another Toxic. But either way, we get those Brocks off the field for the Brock Dippies. Now, does he do like uh, Protect, or King Shield, or does he power up and do a Sword Stance? I don't know, man. This guy's weird. Let's, let's... Oh, okay, he's Sword Stance. Um, uh, I gotta kind of. I would say it's fair to you turn into Tyranitar and fodder that thing off. I don't want to bring in Tyranitar because of his Excadro. True. Um, Aerodactyl and I can't just bring in. Do much, I don't think. Because I can't. Because he's gonna. He might have Shadow Sneak, so I don't want to just throw in Lord Helix. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with. I'll go with Aerodactyl. Sky Terror. Sky. Oh, he's going for. He's oh, getting okay. greedy. All right. So Sky Terror should be able to outspeed this Aegis Slash. Aegis Slash goes for King Shield, but Earthquake does not make contact and does not drop your attack. Tailwind still with one more turn. As Aegis Slash like has to ball. attack here. If he's special, I'm going to laugh my ass off. Uh, we are in the lower tier, so this wouldn't be surprising. <laughs> if he's special, he's special. <laughs> Oh no, he just keeps on going. He's going for another sword dance. I don't know what this man is thinking. But we're going to get some good chip damage off with these uh, earthquakes. Oh, you predicted and went for the home claws. Mm hmm. Oh, this man get went out. for a second king shield. It's over. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Why would you do that? And he has know. nothing to set up sand for Excadrill again. He might. No, he can't Dynamax. Oh, no. Excadrill no, no, no goes sand. down. This went from almost being bad to now this is going to sweep. Another 5-0. <laughs> We're killing it. We're killing it as Brock so far. He forfeited. The game is over. And now we're going to swap back to me trying to find a battle here. So let's go ahead and get back to the grind. Okay, guys. We are here <laughs> facing this interesting team. Yeah. But we're going to go ahead an e and give it a shot. We got Eevee, we got Blaziken, Clefable, Darkrai, Greninja, and Corviknight. He's leading the Eevee, and I feel like he's going to Omni Boost right away. So I'm just going to go now, for the Body Breath. Yeah. Now, this is a funny thing. We just said, hey, let's get a rid Red card. Red card would have been so useful here, but we don't need it because we got rid of him. Gone. Body press, boom, <laughs> out. He's going to surrender. FF, GG, we tried. <laughs> this this would be the easiest win of all time. Okay, we got uh, Blaze again, who's going to probably mega and then protect. Yeah, I'm going to just go for Stealth Rocks. Yeah, Stealth Rocks. All right. Um, I think I'm just going to go Body Press again. Yeah, I would say body press because we don't need to explode yet. I don't think. No, we live any here. We're gonna, yeah. Probably well because our defense is so high. Oh, oh shit! Oh, Overheat. Oh. A special blaze again? Oh. Ho ho ho! Okay, okay. This is interesting. I think he still could be physical. Okay. I'm gonna explosion now because. I mean, we're probably going to Yeah, he's, he's probably going to finish you off anyway, so. Okay. Oh, so we explosion for no reason. Okay. No, that's okay. Oh, uh, let's get Omastar in there. You you think? Or should we get uh, Aerodactyl in there? Well, I think Omastar is the only thing because he doesn't have rocks up. I'm going to go Hell Helix, and I'm just going to... I'm just going to Scald. I don't think we're going to be able to get a Shell Smash off in this battle anyway. No, no I don't think so. And if he's smart, he'll know that and switch out. Oh, uh, yes, this was... live it. Okay. Nice. So now we're faster okay. than even his Greninja.
Is this battle being recorded? Okay, Greninja. Um, uh, I'm almost tempted to say to bring in Chansey because he's probably going to water Shuriken. I'm going to do unless it. We think we, I'm going to do unless it. Unless we think we what, switch or uh, yeah, I'm gonna stay switch. with you. Okay. You're right. Is Shuriken special or physical? Special. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and Toxic. He goes physical, which oh, does oh. nothing. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that bulk. Yeah, this... I mean. You mean, okay. you mean what? You mean what, Jesse? Come on. Finish the thought. Dude, that, that was. Okay, so that's an Evolite Chansey for you. Acrobatics isn't the strongest, especially without an item. <laughs> Someone said, he said, who, I hope whoever's watching is having a good time. Also going to show we're good people, you know, say, hey, you know, thanks for battling with us. He, he's got a tough team, so we're earning our keep with this. Tell, tell him to watch the Pokey Dippies podcast that premieres oh, every gotta, Sunday oh, at yeah. 12 oh, okay. p.m. Central time. Okay. Did a, a gun shot, which we got poisoned on. It's kind of an issue, but not a huge issue. I'm expecting Corviknight here. Oh, he went. He he certainly went there. Um, should I heal Bill or just switch to Hell Helix? Um, I I, I feel you, like Helix will scare him into. You think he's gonna bulk up? I definitely think he's going to bulk up. Um, Yeah, if you think so. I mean, if he attacks, he attacks, so it's not a big thing. And with natural cure... Okay, iron defense. Oh, okay. that's even worse. <laughs> because the rest of our mons are defend uh, physical. Should I Dynamax here? Uh, not really, because he's going to body press and KO you anyways. Uh, our best hope is, is to skull... Everything is resisted. Scald and burn. And then we're going to have to get our boost up. Oh, he dynamaxed. Oh, he dynamaxed. He gigantamaxed. Oh, get the burn. Oh, we didn't get the burn. Uh, okay. Oh, oh this no. This could, this could be a problem. I'm going to go breakfast here. Only because I want to waste this. Gigantamax, and I don't feel we need Beckfist at this point in the battle. Uh, maybe for Clefable. I went soft boil here. Okay. He's going to go Max Knuckle again, I'm pretty sure. X-Wing yeah. could probably take it pretty well, but we have nothing to hit it with. No. Corviknight's starting to wall us a little bit. Yeah, I think we might have to put Heat Wave on X-Wing or something. Or even Flamethrower on Chansey. Maybe if we want to try it. But, uh, I think I'm going to go Seismic gets... Toss here. Because once he gets, once he's done Dynamaxing, Body Press is going to hit us pretty hard. Alright, here we go. Get some chip damage off with Seismic toss. So, what? so he's got iron defense, max knuckle, which is body press. Mm -hmm. And then he's got wing rage, which that's is that a wind attack, a uh, 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 flying attack? Uh, and then he's... I believe so. And then this next hit will confuse you. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, so breakfast is gone. Ah, uh, it's four twenty. Okay. Um. Yeah, this isn't good. I don't think we're gonna win this because T Tar can't take a hit. Aerodactyl. We're gonna we're gonna find out. I mean, X Wing is pretty much useless at this point because it got nothing. I'm gonna go Stone yeah. Edge. It's not gonna do much. Plus two defense. Oh, critical oh, hit critical. though. If we get oh. if we get another critical hit, we have a chance. Okay, uh so 
do we? Oh, uh, I was gonna say maybe Hone Edge. I was gonna say Hone Edge because I felt like he was gonna roost. Oh, uh, if I could have clicked Earthquake there. Well, you would have gone first, so it wouldn't have hit. Oh, true. Yeah. Uh... Well, we hit that Stone Edge. No crit. Body press takes. Oh. Damn it! Okay. Oh man, and we didn't even get the D Max. No, we didn't. All right, so I'm gonna go Black Holy Clips here. It's not gonna help much. Okay. But if we get a critical hit, Black Holy Clips, maybe. Oh! Oh! Almost! Oh! No. No, almost! We don't have any moves. <laughs> so, eh, you know. For our third battle of the night, you know, we can't be too mad about this. I'm going to go G Ma Dynamax Flutterby, because maybe. Yeah, I did, I did see. Maybe. Maybe, baby. We can keep this close. Oh, oh nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. And it lowered our special attack. Oh, so we had a drill pack. So I'm just going to forfeit here, because it, it, yeah. it's not doing anything. Um, let, Hold on. Let's do the GGs first. Yeah, I put my GG. And uh, we're going to go ahead and forfeit here. All right. So that is it for that battle. Let's go ahead and see what Jesse can get himself into here. All right. Let's go so ahead. Confused, but let's... <laughs> he sees Brock Pokey Dippies and Pokey Dippies. <laughs> let's go ahead and see what we can do here. Jesse. It's Jesse's turn here to battle this guy. He has a Tyrantrum. Uh, Celesteela. What the hell is that thing? Uh, Tapu Bulu. Low Punny, oh, which no. is probably Mega. Yeah. Rotom Wash and Garchomp. I'm going to start off with uh, Man Bat. <laughs> I'm so confused by this. Is this like a Brock's gym team? I'm <laughs> a rock hard trainer. <laughs> oh, it makes sense. Um, I feel like he's going to stealth rock. Don't forget to catch Pokey Dippies every Sunday at 12 p.m. Central Time. Oh, he's oh, going he for the fucking... Z move. He, he said, fuck around. your man bet. Okay, so he likes to be that. Okay, that's not a problem. Not a problem at all. All right. Um, He only has one priority move, but that's low bunny, which... Uh, that could be a little risky with Lord Helix. Mm-hmm. Because Fake Out could do you in. Let's, get, let's go ahead and go with Aerodactyl. I wonder how you'll play. Uh, like Brock would. Duh. <laughs> like an idiot. Um. <laughs> but thank you, Razor the Pro, for joining us tonight. <laughs> this Pokey Dippy's might... battle. Uh, should I go for the Hung Claws or uh, like an? Oh, I feel like he's gonna switch to Celesteela. You think he'll switch? Yeah, yeah I think so. If you think he'll switch, go for the Hung Claws. Um, um, Dude, okay, you're so fucking did. pro reads right here. I would have never. Well, it, in a million it's years tough guessing. because when you're smart, uh, when you're playing against tougher competition, you can kind of see the plays a little bit. Like, he would expect me to use Earthquake. But, you know, a Celesteela is also a good switch into it. Yeah, he said, geez, Honeclaw OP. <laughs> oh, wow, Stone Edge did massive damage, but Heavy Slam did more. Yeah. And they got the special defense boost, so Lloyd Helix is not the mon we want to go to here. Yeah, we might need to put a fire move because I'm realizing. Uh, let's go with this. Um, okay, interesting. You went to Steelix. The only problem is he's got that uh, heavy slam. Mm hmm. But he's probably dynamite. special too. Uh, okay, use protect. He said, "I don't think the Pokemon game should be real advice for competitive teams." Well, that's where you're wrong, Razor the Pro. What do you mean? 
these teams have done great. Guy. You just have like OP Pokemon on your team. Critical hit. Mm, critical hit. Easy switch. Hee <laughs> hee. The chancy. Okay. Oh, uh, do, 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 do. think he predicts the toxic? Possibly. Nope. Hey, that's not bad. It's not bad damage, but we have no switches. All right, I wish Switch is in. Low Punny takes some damage thanks to the Rocky Helmet Switch we made because Red Card was not helping us at all. Uh... Close Combat does not take I wish out. And Body Press takes out the Low Punny. So so... <laughs> yeah, this is a max defense, so that Body Press can do damage. All right, so Garchomp versus I Wish. Uh, is this okay. an explosion play here, or I, I need to get Stealth Rocks off. If I can get Stealth Rocks off, and he doesn't do that, then Lord Helix can sweep. Earthquake Damn. takes out Steelix, and that's a problem. Because I don't see any priority moves on his team. He doesn't have priority I that I can see, and I think. Um, a Shell Smash Scald will take out Celestilla from where it's at. The only yeah. problem I see is Rotom. Why is that? Because it's pretty tanky. Well, but uh, Ice Beam should But it's also at 59%. So. It's at 59%, so it's not oh, then to it, hit. It should, it should go down. Tyranitar is full health, though, so I don't know if you can take it out. Yeah, Rough Skin does nothing if I die because it's not a physical attack. Tapu Bunga right. goes down, so... Come on, let's Race go of the Pro the says, Rough Skin does nothing if I die. Interesting. Let's go, Lord Helix. It was also Give me that healing. It was also a special move at the same time, so of course Rough Skin yeah. wouldn't do nothing. Rotom is at 59%. Let's see if Lord Helix can get this kill here. It, is, it, uh, all, it really all comes down to this, I think. Um, Do you think... Uh, should I go Scald or Ancient Power? I think Scald would be the better play, but... <laughs> Shell Smash does so much speed. Um... Ancient power is also stab. Uh, what has let's better yeah, base let's, power? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, we're going with ancient power. Oh, did you get the boost? No, that would have been oh, sweet if I did. Oh, no boost. Tyrantrum comes in, and uh, I think Scald would have to be the player Ice Beam. Oh, no, Ice Beam. It's a dragon type. There we go. And you get the reverse sweep with Lord Helix. Oh, Lord Helix, man. Praise him. GG to Razor the Pro. He almost had that. That was so weird, is what he says to us. And we're going to go ahead and look for another battle. All right, guys, we are back in. And um, let's go ahead and see if uh, we, yes, can, I lost. <laughs> we can match the win here. Uh, Jesse is undefeated so far. I am not. Um, we have another EV team in front of us. I'm going to go ahead and lead Steelix again. Deancey is actually the one that leads the team. Um, I think I'm going to go Gyro Ball here. You think Gyro Ball will be better than, uh, oh, Body Gyro Press? Ball will, well, yeah, well, Gyro Ball will be, uh, double, it will be four times effective. It might not do too much just because Deancey is not that quick. <laughs> Pindustry is asking us, how's life? And then Brock oh Poke Jesse said, ladies keep evading me. And then Pendustry says, overlatable. But we're going to go ahead and go. <laughs> oh, oh. He goes calm me. mind, and we're going oh, for this gyro ball. Oh. And it goes down because it gets almost 100 speed. 
when it <laughs> mega evolves. All right, so Eevee's coming in, and we're just gonna body press this motherfucker because you know what's coming. We we know how this works. Okay. Oh, it lives. this one lives, so it has defensive investment. I think I should I wonder... go for a stealth rock here. I'm wondering if this is dangerous because I don't know if I don't play a whole lot of this. So baton pass is a real possibility. Oh, it's definitely coming. That's why I don't know if I should just go for stealth rocks, explosion, another body press. Um, I'm tempted to go body. Uh, I'm gonna I don't go know, body cause I press because like... I think it's a two coat on no matter what Pokemon it goes to, other than Latias. Yeah, because I'm feeling like he might switch over to Smurgle. Let's see. Let's it's see. really it's really hard to tell. I'm going for body press again. Uh, he's asking yeah. if it's GG's. I don't fucking think so. He That's goes to Smurgle. Smurgle. Okay. Michelangelo. Oh, what? It's not sashed. It oh, wasn't sashed. Oh, he goes down. Probably GG for him. And he says, damn. Pin Dustry was not expecting this heat. Okay, so... The number one thing, and I know this just because I hate uh, <laughs> Smurgle usually is a starter and it usually has smash, but this guy was probably trying to build up like make a hey, look at my Meditite kind of video because you know it could learn Batan Pass and it probably had Moody. <laughs> it just well, doesn't make he, sense. Oh, he well, just we get a second forfeit here tonight. And um he seemed to have been running a Lepa Berry on his team. And this is uh, kind of the sad thing about the lower tiers is the yeah. you get you know, and anything goes you can see a lot. I'm people have probably watched plenty of videos. I know I've watched them of them building up certain mods to kind of make clickbait videos. This almost feels like it, especially when you see a medite. Yeah. But, I mean, we're always going to be low tier when we do this. So, I think yeah, it's kind of fair because we, we do have basically a mono team when we come into this anyway. Yeah, because we – I mean, the, the thing is just to test a team and kind of see how it goes. And we definitely don't want to go against, like, 1800s because uh, we're probably going to get smashed facing 1800s. So, this is kind of, you know, hey, just a little fun. You know, the good news is I've noticed this. A lot of people are talking to us. Oh, yeah. They're talking to us, and they're it, I think they're enjoying the time that they're battling with us, too. So, we'll, we'll go uh, ahead but... and see if you can find a decent pairing whenever uh... – you do your third battle, and we'll pretty much close it off from there. All right, let's do this. This looks more like an OU kind of bitch team. Mm-hmm. Are you battling David right now? <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. We got to get rocks on the, the field. That's important because... Uh, I think you oh should gyro God. ball right out, right out of the gate. I want to, but I have to get rocks out because if not, Dragonite becomes a big issue. Whew. And plus, it's going to veil anyway, so it's. You've won one more game than I have, so. <laughs> I'm just thinking out loud. Okay, Blizzard. Okay, that's smart. You know what's smart? Ooh, took it down to the sash. Yeah, a sash. So that means it's not light play all. All right, so you so, you can even go to chance if you want to. Oh, you yeah, that's what I'm, you read my mind. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I want to stall out this veil as much as I can, just so it's basically utterly useless. Talk so boiling all over the place. Uh, and if that nine tail switches out, it's fucked. Well, I was thinking toxic, but poison heal on Gliscor is probably what it might go for. I think I'm going to go with the safe and just soft boil just so I can run this out because Ninetales is dead anyways. Oh, yeah, definitely. Watch it get frozen. <laughs> that would suck. That would definitely suck. All right. Okay, now you go hey, to Glide Score. And I went with the Seismic Toss. Okay. Fucking nice. But he has toxic kill anyway. 
All right. Um, he does have a priority move in Greninja. Um, he's probably going to go for like an Earthquake or a Sword Stance. I think you're safe to go to Crobat or Aerodactyl for sure. Yeah, I was kind of thinking that. Uh, Defog, okay. That's smart. Because I, I got to keep the, the rocks up because multi-scale Dragonite is such a fucking threat. And this is actually like me actually tryharding because I don't have a choice. <laughs> You wanted this oh battle. Really? Acrobatics, Gliscor? Well, the okay. good thing is he hasn't flung his uh, item yet. This is where dual wing bait would have been really good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um... All right, go U-turn. He can't knock you off here. Acrobatics ain't going to do much, and a Z Black Hole Eclipse will probably take this thing out, in all honesty. Glass score is pretty bulky, but after toxic damage, it might do enough. Let's hope. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna go with Z the home, home Claws. Claws. Generic monster, the Tyranitar, is now on a timer. After going for the Z Home Claws, that boosts its attack. One more time. Stone Get Edge out takes here, out score. the fucking Gliscor, but there is no rocks on the field to stop Dragon Knight from getting that multi boot multi scale boost. A little nine tails also comes in for free, getting off of probably an Aurora Veil. Oh, it goes for the Blizzard. Does not get the Aurora Veil off for some reason. Definitely a this misplay on his part. This is okay. He's it's going for time. that, yeah. Yeah. If I can get Greninja out, then sh then uh, almost star sweeps. I mean, you're free to toxic. Yeah, you're right. Oh, hey. And just to clarify, Jesse has a six four advantage. Against GGG665. Oh, yes. Beautiful. Perfect. Dragonite gets toxic and is now on a timer. And there is no Dynamaxing in Jesse's game. I don't think I Dynamaxed in my game. And I had the opportunity. <laughs> Did I? Uh, I don't think so. you, you. I don't think you Dynamaxed. And maybe in the first one. In the first one for sure, but I don't think in the last one. Okay, he might dragon dance. Um, I think seismic tossing this thing to death would be the play, but you still have two special attackers in the back. So, I mean, Crobat, kind of a fair thing. I to just want to get Sand Stream up. Yeah. Okay, so this is a dumb add dragon. Chip, that, okay. That'll add chip damage. He went for break break on a crowbat. <clears throat> so Dragonite is in versus Sky Terror. Sky Terror has the advantage here with speed and sand, boosting its special defense. Dragonite is toxic at 61%. Stone Edge will take it out if it connects, and it does. Dragonite goes down here. And Ooh. Sky Terror is faster than everything on GGG665 side. Landorus brings in an Intimidate. Uh. Avoids a Stone Edge. I'm sure it would not have taken two. Sky Terror goes for the Home Claws here. Uh. And Landorus goes for its own Stone Edge, taking out the Aerodactyl. And it is now 4-3 to three Jesse's favor. But that was, this is a problem. that was a problem. Aerodactyl was the key to this battle. Now, yeah, because uh, with Greninja still out, it's still a problem. Triple G665 still has Charizard, Greninja, and Landorus. And Greninja and Landorus are pretty much at full health. Lord Helix is out here, though. And it is free to get off a shell smash. I don't know if I can. 
I think you can because I don't think Greninja's uh, Water Shuriken is priority unless are you, it's. Are you thinking Greninja. he's gonna switch? No, no. What I'm saying is, uh, Water Shuriken isn't priority unless it's Ash Greninja. I don't think. It's going to be, yeah, it's priority anyways. Are you sure? Yeah. I don't think it is. But that's actually okay because I think Chansey walls the rest of his team. And the fact that he's bringing it in kind of proves it. I'm going to look that up. Ugh. I mean, you're free to toxic and then just soft boil away. Oh, was that two toxic misses? Yep. You might as well soft boil here, yeah. 90% move. Now I know how our friend Dusty feels when they 90% move, percent move, 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 it misses twice in a row. Watch him get lately frozen. There we go. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> oh, you know what? Switch out, switch out, switch out, and switch back in. It natural. Yeah, the cure. only problem is he'll... your natural I cure. I don't think your natural cure. It'll heal it. Oh no! That was probably worst case scenario. You might want to. Nah, worst. I think it's still you, two specials. I think you go Crobat here. Crobat. Oh. Oh. Yeah, he's he's got specialers. Special attacker, so both of them get walled the fuck out of Chansey. Hee <laughs> hee. <laughs> if my toxics can hit. There we there go. We Thank, go. You. Thank you. There you go. Oh, Wonder Ball. Ooh, I like it. Now it's time for the stall fest. Yeah. And you're I right. to do this. Water shuriken is plus one priority, no matter what. Yep. Mm -hmm. I thought it was only when it was Ash Greninja. I could have sworn no, it was Ash, in Gen 6. The thing is, it actually uh, boosts its attack, and I think it hits more in Ash Greninja form. It, in Ash Greninja form, it always hits three times. But I also thought it was priority only in that form. And this charge art is uh, worse for wear here. As Chansey is just going to wall the fuck out of it. Two, yeah. of, two, of Chan two of Dusty's favorite Pokemon walling, <laughs> getting walled by one another. Oh man! Oh. And I just won ten bucks because Arizona just kicked the game winner field goal against Dallas Cowboys. Why did you bet on a freaking preseason? Because I knew I knew I was gonna win. <laughs> 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 just like you just won this battle, and oh, that is man. it for this podcast here, Jesse. How did you feel about Brock's team? You clearly went undefeated. I won two out of the three. But let's go ahead and get your thoughts first since you won more of the games. <laughs> so uh, I want to just go quickly over uh, what we built on our team just to give it a quick rundown so people can see what we were trying to do. Because oh, we did on. build this. Let me, let, let me uh, pull that up here so uh, okay. people can see exactly what we did. All right, here we go. Okay, so we built the team together. We, you know, kind of bounced ideas off of each other. And the team worked fairly well. Uh, there's definitely things that could wall it. We, Corviknight is definitely a threat for this team. So, you know, we could, you Any know, change a few type, things. Really? Yeah, well, yes. We've got Earthquake on some people, like uh, Aerodactyl and Tyranitar. But like Celesteela, Skamari, the ones that can avoid that kind of hurt it a lot. So... Um, we went with, uh, we had our Aerodactyl Mega, just a good, like, Mega, it's speedy and hits hard. Uh, we gave it Home Claws just to give it Stone Edge, you know, the times that it actually missed, you know, we could have used a Home Claws. Yeah. Uh, but it also had Earthquake <laughs> and Aerial Ace. Aerial Ace just because of the, uh, 
the boost from its tough claws. We didn't really utilize that a lot, but we thought these moves were best for it, so it was kind of hard to justify it. This would be one of the ones where we could probably take, like, maybe Earthquake out or Aerial Ace for, like, a Fire Fang. I think that would work pretty good, but I, even still, like, Corviknight's defensive, so it's tough to break through on a someone like that. I certainly think if we would have taken out Earthquake for a Fire Fang, I think that would have helped us out a lot more. And for those wondering why we went Home Claws instead of Dragon Dance, Clearly, Aerodactyl does not need the speed. But no, it does not. It does need the accuracy, as you saw, because we missed plenty of Stone Edges and even Chansey with the 90% uh, percent Toxic was missing. So oh. It never hurts yeah. to have that little bit of accuracy on your side. Yeah. Um, then we went with Crobat. Crobat was mainly for utility. Um I still feel like there was things we could have done better. Like, we could have possibly even ran Taunt. Tailwind wasn't really needed a whole lot. And even when it was, it was maybe for a turn or two. So it was just basically our, you know, utility. You had to Fog, U-Turn, Toxic. It was Definitely. just basically because it's it's really quick. So it makes for a good Defogger. Um, I, I, then the core. Sorry. I also feel like um, we could have put Heat Wave on it. Yeah. Instead of uh, possibly defog, because you know, rocks wasn't really gonna hurt our team, so it wasn't oh. as big a deal. I mean, you know, it would have hurt Aerodactyl quite a bit, but in probably I would... obviously broke our sash on Hell Helix. But as often as we were able to get that thing set up, I don't think it would have been as much of an issue, and I think uh, Heat Wave would have fit Crobat a little bit better. See, that's where I would have actually said Tailwind, because I don't think Tailwind got a whole much of practical use other than T-Tar, and even still, I don't think that was enough. So <clears throat> I would have been probably more for that. But yeah, Heat Wave probably would have helped on something like uh, Corviknight. So um, next two Pokemon were definitely the freaking, I think, the, Pivotal the anchors of the our team. teams. Yes. Yeah, because... Uh, we, uh, we originally were thinking um, of putting on Swampert, but clearly, uh, Chansey and Steelix were the way to go. Yeah, because, you know, we, you also got to remember when we did this, we didn't add Rhyperia, and Rhyperia would have been amazing, too, on this team. Definitely. So, it would have probably, uh, our... probably just been just as good as Rocky, but I don't think it would have had the utility that Rocky would have had to help us get those clutch oh, defensive plays in. Yeah, talking about that Rocky, that Steelix. Uh, we originally went in with a red card because, you know, hey, he's got sturdy. He can take a hit. That might be good if something gets yeah. really built up. It actually hurt us more than help us. So we went with a Rocky helmet instead. This thing was juiced up. It had max defense. It was uh, freaking relaxed, which is defense minus speed. So we can make sure it was just the beef. It's at 548 defense, man. No. <laughs> No physical attacks were going to destroy it. And um, I like the move set on it because it really, it really, it really, it really freaking shines. Yeah, it really lets it shine because you don't need to put that attack investment because as long as you're negative speed and max defense, um, you can really let it shine with gyro ball and body press. And then mm -hmm. explosion, which we didn't really push at all. I mean, I, even I without, did once on the protect. Yeah, even without the attack investment, it still does a big ass chunk no matter what you're hitting. And it's kind of like a, a poor man's teleport. Like, if you know you're going to die or you won't survive another hit, you can do this, do some chip damage, and maybe get someone set up for uh, another move. So I think that was pretty good with the stealth rock. It, stealth rock was definitely good. And yeah, that definitely out of all these, uh, which, you know, Lord Helix, our savior, was really good. Chansey was amazing. You know, just, you know, special attacks, you know, water attacks going at our rocks. This thing, Chansey sucked them up. Oh, yeah, big time. You know, uh, we had the Evolite. Now, this is weird. It's a little weird because we actually went with a max defense. And with the absurd amount of HP it had, which was 703, with the Evolite and the max defense, it actually could take a defensive hit too, which at that like, point is it even fair? <laughs> no, right? 
you know, we went with the soft boil seismic talk heel bell toxic. Um, we could have probably done something other than heel bell because heel bell really didn't get a whole lot of use, mm -hmm. but it was still a good move to have just in case like, Hey, you know, cause to be honest, like not a whole lot of Armands was going to survive like a skull burn because the skull would probably fuck it up too much where heel bell might not be worth it. Like heel bell on a Steelix, is that worth it? You know, it's going to die if we bring it back in in most cases. So, Definitely. but you know, it did, this thing did work especially in that last game. And then my one of my favorites, um, and this actually helped me get a little bit better because I realized uh, Almost Star was definitely like our win condition. And in when a, we were... In most of the games. Yes. Dynamax uh, or we're, not. When we were playing teams, we wanted to make sure, at least when I was playing one, no rocks are on the field, mm -hmm. which may, with Crobat, that's a good way to do it. And then with also making sure, hey, is there any people that have priority moves? You know, even a simple fake out could take down Omastar if it's already gotten its focus sash broken down. So we need to make sure anyone that might have priority moves gets taken care of. Which, like, for instance, the last battle, I would wanted to save it, but I had to use it a, a turn too early because the guy brought in his uh, freaking... Greninja, and I knew he was going to try to use Water Shuriken, and I just couldn't do that. So, this still, you know, almost star, I think, especially in the DMAX setting, could just wreck. And I think, well, our team was good, but it limited on our DMAX because I honestly think, like, maybe Celix, but almost star was the only one we could really Dynamax because we had a Z move on our Titar. Our Aerodactyl is mega, and you're not going to Dynamax Chansey or Crobat, even though we did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, with this team, uh, let's go ahead and move on to the last member, which yes. was uh, <clears throat> my nickname for it was Wannabe Zilla, the Tyranitar. And mine's was uh, a generic monster, because <laughs> everyone likes to call it Godzilla. Yeah. I, we didn't want to be. Uh, you know, predictable. But even okay. with this thing, uh, we, we contemplated on how the hell we're going to run this thing. Tyranitar, Dark Enium Z, uh, Sandstream, of course, to boost our special defense. Because, you know, most most of our team isn't going to be really specially defensive bulk-wise. Um, yeah. And then we ran uh, Crunch and Home Claws, two dark moves, because, you know, Home Claws is where we wanted to get the Dark and EMZ off, mostly. And Jesse really showed that and made it shine. Uh, and um, Brunch, Stone Edge, Earthquake was great coverage for this mod. A uh, double stab with Earthquake as coverage. And um, we'd certainly make made it as bulky as we could at 160 HP. While getting the most out of its speed under Tailwind at 96. So at the base 200 speed that we had uh, under Tailwind, it would get to 400. And then with the attack at 252 plus the Home Claws boost, if we can get it under Tailwind. I mean, that's just a fucking much. You might as well have a weakness policy wannabe Zilla without having to take a hit. Yeah, I think if this... if. There was some way we could have gotten Sticky Web out. I think that Z Home Claws would really shine because Z Home Claws boost your attack. Well, Home Claws just boost your attack and your accuracy, which is useful for Stone Edge yet oh, again. Definitely. And then with the Z, you get a, a double boost. So you're going to get plus two attack plus the accuracy boost, which if you can get a way around Tyranitar's speed problems, which a Dragon Dance usually would, you know, if we can get webs out or if we had Tailwind out, that would help it. Granted, it's only good for two turns, but a Tyranitar can probably take down two Pokemon in two turns. So and that this was the one. And that this is the, one, the battle. Yeah, and this is like the one we kind of, you know, kind of went a, a little off the rails with because pretty much all the, the first five were fairly standard. This one was just a little bit different. Just, you know, try something out, see how it worked. Yeah, like I said at the beginning, we were definitely contemplating Swampert, and uh, Swampert could have even took in this spot as an uh, offensive attacker, but, you know, when you have option to put a Tyranitar on your team, you have to put Tyranitar on your team. 
I think so. Yeah, its stats are just too good. And even four times weakness, like I was talking to you earlier when we were building the team, I was saying, hey, we could even go with the Pasho Berry because you know, it, you know, Karate Chop makes it cry. So. And um, yeah, I mean, I was definitely considering, and uh, I let Jesse know because Jesse is the counter Pokemon trainer of all time. Um, <laughs> we're we're certainly considering Focus Ash counter, but we certainly didn't think it would benefit us as much as Darkenium Z Home Claws, which gives us that attack boost where we can take multiple hits and dish hits out, and not just use Tyranitar as a one hit heat fodder. So no, yeah, you don't. I want, will say... you don't want to use T Tar as that. I will say that would be a good uh, Corviknight counter, though. Oh, definitely. Definitely. If you can get that Focus Sash uh, body press hit from the Corviknight oh, and yeah. just counter that thing back, oh, fuck, that would have been amazing. I would have jizzed in my pants <laughs> right then and there. <laughs> but all right, guys, that's pretty much all we can say and do with Brock's team. Of course, a uh, quick recap on that. Brock is the first gym leader of the Kanto region. Of course, great coverage with his team. As you can see, as we listed off the, the team, the Pokemon earlier of possible team members we could have had. And then when we, on, when we fell on these six Mon, and we just explained to you why, this is how productive Brock's team was. I just calced it up, and we won five out of six, which is not bad at all with the with the all rock team. Yeah, and especially like I said, we this team it was a combination of the anime and the game. And when you have a a good defensive mm -hmm. core and a good special defensive core, like these are two of arguably the best stat wise for each stat. It, it definitely helps you just to begin with. So we will finish off this podcast by saying this Brock team won 83% of its battles. So 83% is a B at worst. So Brock's team, we will give it a B ranking at 83%. Yeah. And we will see how Misty's team fares next week. Yep. So catch it next time. <clears throat> we will see you guys next time.